Midjourney have updated their organizational features on the Midjourney website for your images. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to use those new features to organize your images. We're also gonna cover the rest of the organizational process, how you can download, download bulk, and even hide images. And there is a function that allows you to kind of delete them, but not really, I'll cover that soon. So now we're gonna start by looking at the new folder system. So we're on the Midjourney website here. And what we're gonna do is go down to organize. In the past, this was called my images or archive. Now it's just called organize. And I have a bunch of images here. I'm gonna zoom in so we can see a little bit more clearly. And you'll notice that the sidebar is gonna disappear and we get some icons. But if we hover over them, we can still see where we're going, but it just makes it a bit easier to follow along in this video. So you notice now there is a folder tab up here. So we can now organize into folders. In the past, we used to have folders that have now been moved to saved searches. You can see them here. I will cover that again in a moment. But the new folder system is a little bit more manual. So the way it works is if I click here on folders, I can add a new folder. So I have here like some images of Goku. So if I decided to go new folder and call it Goku, I can go through, create as many folders as I want. And what I can do is grab images like this Goku image just drag and drop it into the folder, or I can click on this image, click on the folder icon, add it to Goku, click out. If I multi-select, I can go to more, add to folder, Goku, and select multiple images at once. So it's a pretty straightforward process of adding and subtracting from that folder. Now I come up the top here, go to Goku, and I can view the images I add to that folder. Now it looked like I added more images, but I reselected some of the same images and basically redid the process. But of course, if I decide I want to click on an image, I can just click the little X here to remove it from the folder. So that's pretty handy. Now adding this after I originally recorded the video, but if I wanted to select the entire day or select many images whilst the folder is open, I can also come down to more and remove these from the folder in bulk as well. Now the multiple select, if I go back to organize, Sorry, if I close the folder up here, again, I can simply come up to search, type Goku, and I can go through and select full days if I want to and add them to my folder. So I've got 76 images here. Once again, I go to more down the bottom, add to folder, Goku, and they're all in there. What's also really cool is I can categorize my folders as well. So if I'm gonna end up sorting into a whole bunch of different folders, I can create a new folder group. So I'll call this one anime. I can drag this in here. So now under the anime folder group, I have Goku. Maybe I'll also add in here, Pikachu. And again, if I search for Pikachu at the top here, I can start dragging images in or doing any of the other processes I covered to add to those folders. So that's a really good manual organizational process you can use in Midjourney to create folders and sort through bits and pieces to find what you want. So coming out of the Goku folder, I'm gonna to touch on some of the more organizational features. I'm gonna click on that to, to close it down. And now we're gonna look at saved searches, which is also the old folder system. In the past, we had saved searches. Now these were cool, these were more like filters. So if I click on Hanya here, it brings up a series of samurai style images and the way it works, if I click on the three dots, anytime we have the word Hanya or samurai in our prompt, it will appear under that saved search. So if you're looking for something a bit more automated, you can set up a saved search. So if I click add search here, and this time I call it Hulk and in search terms I add Hulk, you can add in as many search terms as you want, separate them by commas. I'm just gonna stick with one for now. I can create a saved search. And now when I click on this Hulk area, if you watch my style uh, videos, you notice I've used the Hulk a lot. I've got a whole bunch of Hulk images here. So I can save searches I'm constantly coming to here. And again, I'm also a fan of the HR Giga art style I use. You probably heard me mention a lot in my videos. So again, add search, HR Giga. But this time I'll just type in Giga. Save search. So now I can easily go between and check out all the HR Giga style images I've created. So that's another really powerful organizational tool for exploring what you've created in Midjourney. But now we're gonna cover some of the filters you can use to also further organize your images. But also I wanna mention that now they have this profile section here. 
So I've got a few different mood boards here. So if I go on the HR Giga mood board, I haven't got any images created with it, but I have things like my Gustavesque black and white. Although I still have this save search titled here. So it's important to note that when we're going through these, we need to turn that off. So now when I go to my HR Giga mood board, I get the images I created with that mood board. I can also multiple select. So I have my Gustav black and white as well. So creating your personalization profiles, you can also filter that way. And of course, these filters work across the board here, like anything we've liked. We can also just go, if we wanna look for our high resolution upscales, we can just choose upscales, including aspect ratio or version. Now I find version to be very handy because if I come down the right here, you notice it says 26th of January, I come down to 2024, 2023, 22, I can come down to say the 30th of August, 2022, and load some of my very old images. But this can be a little bit cumbersome and there's a ton of images here to sort through. So what I can do is instead of going that way, I can come straight back to the top and just simply choose older models. So a couple of years ago, I would have been using version four. I can click version four and I'll get most of my version four images or even go to version three. So that's a nice little tip for going through and finding older images is just thinking of what model was being used at that time and filtering that way. So these filters are a great way to go through, find the images you're after in place and basically cut through the noise and get straight to the chase. So now, of course, then while we're here, I just want to mention you've got the view options here. So layout is square. So if you have different aspect ratios, you can switch to full and it will sort of shrink them to fit. I just like the square to be honest. So I usually go with square and you can change the grid size. So if you're looking for something a bit quicker or if you want to get larger, you can get a bit up close. So just remember you have all those options when you're filtering through. So that brings me to downloading. So for starters, now, even if you're on the explore page, it's the exact same process. If I click on an image and I want to download it, I just come up here to the download button and I can download that to my computer. So I click and I can save an image here if I want to. But we're more concerned with actually downloading in bulk off the website. So I'm gonna go back. Once again, we wanna be under organize over here. And there's a few different ways we wanna do this. So one is I can just select a day at a time. I can scroll through and select this entire day. And you'll see it's selected 948 images. I can click download. It will zip it up and allow me to download those files. And I can also unselect this. I can simply hold down shift and select one image at a time. And every time we do this, we get this little bar down the bottom here with the download button. Now you don't just have to click and select, you can also drag a box and whatever the box touches, it will also select. And if I drag through the middle, it will or hold down shift, it will deselect. So holding here, it doesn't matter if I drag over, it won't reselect it, but if I hold down shift, I can deselect certain things as well. So that's pretty handy and a great way to sort of very quickly grab bits and pieces. What I like to do, is again, if I go to say a search, this time I type in Darth Vader, get all my Darth Vader images, is I can organize and then go through and select entire days, deselect certain images. So if I'm looking for images in particular, a good combination is to use some of these uh, search functions or save search functions to go through and select and cut out a lot of the images you don't wanna to have to deal with. And of course, if I go into our folder for Goku, turn off my search up here. I can select the full day, scroll down, select the full day. And if you're doing this process, this could be a good time to change to a smaller view, but I can use these folders and just basically download in bulk directly from those folders as well. So combining the organizational tools with the bulk downloader is really powerful. So if I hit the X here, it will unselect everything. But just to show you how this works, I'm gonna select these four images, hit download, it will zip them up. Keeping in mind, if you select more than 50 images, it will break them up into chunks of 50. And there is an option to change that, but I generally recommend leaving it at default. And you'll basically get several zip files to download. It'll say, you can see down here, it says zero to four, it'll say zero to 50, and then it'll say 51 to say 100, that kind of thing, and break it up into several zip archives, and they'll just download one after the other. But at the moment, I have this one zip archive with four images. I click save. And you can see I have this archive here. Now I use WinRAR, but essentially I can right click and extract this. So if I use WinRAR, I just go to extract to folder 
or you might use extract all, which is the basic Windows default. So here, extract a folder, and there are my images. These are PNGs at the full resolution so I can use them for whatever project I want to. And finally, we're gonna look at hiding and possibly kind of deleting your images. But there's a bit of a caveat to that. But when it comes to, organize, to organizing your feed, here I'm gonna go back to organize. Same as before, I can click on one image, go to the little hamburger menu here, and hide this image. So now when I go back to my feed, it's gone. Now this doesn't delete the image. There are certain ways you can kind of delete images, but at the end of the day, Midjourney still retains that image and can use it and put it out to the public. And these hidden images are only hidden on your feed. So unfortunately, unless you have one of the top two tier plans, in which case you can use stealth mode and make things private, that's the only way you can hide them from the public is to use that process and have one of those top two sort of membership tiers. But coming back, I can also hold down shift, do my multi-select, select the day if I want to, whatever I need to do to select these things. I can come to more down the bottom here and I can hide again. Keeping in mind if I hide something I don't want to, I can come out, go to filters and I can switch to hidden. And this shows all of the hidden images, which I've actually used. These are all images I've hidden for tutorials in the past. So I can go through and unhide them. So if I want to find my Goku images, I've got a few older ones here. I've got these ones here I just did. I can select them all, go to more and unhide them to pop them back on the main feed. So again, untick, unhide, and we're back to our normal feed. Close down the search. So we've been able to hide and unhide our images. Now I've only got a basic plan, so I can't show you how to, uh, I can't show you exactly how to make your images private. But essentially, if I click here, click on the drop down here, there will be a unpublish button here, which hides it from the public and hides it from your feed. Whereas hide image only hides it from you and your feed in particular. But the next thing you can do is if you actually create your images in Discord, so I'm going to switch over to Discord. Now, I still like to use Discord a lot simply because of the custom codes and other features. But you can see these four images here are the same as these first four images here on the website. So notice we have them here. We have the lightsaber in front of Darth Vader's face. We also have this sort of shatter effect here. And we get the exact same images over here. So if I have this grid... I hover over it or tap and hold if you're on the phone. If you can hit the X icon, it may not be there. You may need to go to add reaction. It says here frequently used, but I can just type in X to filter to it. This red X, if I click on that, it deletes the message from Discord. If I head back to the website, these images are still here, but I refresh the page and they're gone, completely gone off the feed. Even if I go to hidden over here on the right, they're not here on this page either. So in a way, you kind of, that's the more permanent way of deleting images. They have to be made in Discord first. You can't simply go to show and bring it up in Discord and hide it that way or delete it that way. That's kind of like the most deletable way you can get rid of your images is to make them in Discord and delete the original message. But hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of how this new organization function works, how you can organize, bulk download, hide your images, and again, if you want to unpublish your images, you need to go to one of the higher tier plans and that way you can use stealth mode. So you can see here, there's a few different options for activating stealth mode and you can unpublish your images so the public can't see them. So that is the video for today, guys. I hope you found that useful. I hope it gives you uh, something to work with, take more control over how you organize your images in mid journey. If you liked the video, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.